Hey guys, welcome to another Unity 5 tutorial today, and this is going to be showing you how to make a menu in Unity 5. Now my background is only a terrain, and I've got a camera which has a few image effects on, and it's got a blur image effect. So this is going to be sort of, you can put anything in your menu, it could be just something blank. This is just going to be our background. So to start off with, what we want to do is go Game Object, UI, and go Image. So we're going to start off with an image, I'll go into the scene view. If you need to, on your scene view, you can click 2D and it will go into the 2D view. And you might need to zoom in or zoom out. You can select the move tool. If you select the image and you press F, it'll zoom into it. And then we might want to scale out so we can see the bounding box, which is the actual UI that we're going to be able to see. We want to be able to... Um, We'll adjust this X and Y position at the top to 0, 0, so it's centralized. What we're going to do is we can, we're going to put a picture in, or an image. It could be text, but I'll give you this example. So I'm going to import a new asset, and I'm just going to import my um, Speed Shooter logo that we're going to use. And when you bring in any sort of image, if it needs transparency, you want to make it a Sprite 2D and UI, and then it will hold the transparency for you. We can go back on the image on the canvas, drag the logo or whatever image you might have into the source image slot we can go into the game view and you can see it there in the middle what i'm going to do is i'm going to set the width and height to maybe 250 and 250 and then what i'm going to do is i'm going to drag this up to maybe the top corner here so now we have it we're going to have just a menu coming down here now what we can do from here is if we select canvas again and we go game object UI, we want to add a button. So we can add a button and we can drag this over to next to where our image is. We can click back on the game tab and we can see that it's there. So if we stick in the scene, we can set maybe the width to, let's say two, two, five. I might set the height to 40 just to be a little bit um, different. So we can move that into place. So just sort of maybe at the middle of the logo that we've got. You can, you know, arrange this however you want. Now there's our button in the game view. If we go onto the button here and we click the drop down, we can go to text and we can change this text to whatever we want on the right hand side in the inspector. So I'm going to name this new game. And if I zoom in a little bit on the scene view, we could potentially change the font size. So we could set this to 20. I'll go into the game view, you can see it there, 20s um, looks quite nice. We can keep um, everything the same for now. When we play the game, you might notice that it does nothing. It doesn't really do anything interesting. You might have noticed that we went in when we went into the game, it sort of centralized it in a weird um, maybe position. What we can do is we can actually change the uh, anchor point to center and then we can change it to the top left if we click on that box here and we can do the same for the button we can set it to top left now if we now press play it will be positioned toward the top left of that space that we've got we could drag these two down and potentially just pull them out a little bit and we can see what it looks like. That looks nice there. What we can do from here is if we select the button, what I'll do is I'll rename this new game BTN for new game button. And what I can do is I can change the color if I wanted of the actual um, thing that we've got. But what we can do down here over the button is we can have the normal color. So if we click normal color and we click the little color dropper, we can maybe select a color that we might want and I'll select maybe that blue. Maybe I'll select the lighter blue for this. And then what I might want to do is I might want to select a highlighted color and I'll select maybe a portion of this orange there. Now we can't really see the text color very well. So what we could do is we could go on the text and choose the color and make it more towards white. And then if we press play again, we can get, you know, a different colored button here. What we could potentially even do 
is change the highlighted color to a slightly darker orange so it contrasts a little bit better with the white that we have. So we're just matching up a sort of consistent style with how we want. What we could potentially do is close that up. We could duplicate that button and rename this exit game BTN if we wanted to. And we could potentially pull this down by a certain amount, roughly there. And what we could do is we could offset these buttons um, however we like. So we could, I could leave new game about there. I could offset the inset the exit button to here and maybe I could pull these two down a little bit away from the actual logo itself and then we can get a difference. We can go on the exit button, go on the text and we can change this to exit game and we can press play and we'll get exactly the same thing here and here. So what we can do is we can create a simple script seeing as though we've created two buttons. So what we'll do is right click C sharp script and we'll call this button manager. And then I'll open up this in Visual Studio or whatever programming um, editor that you've got. Now what I like to do is pull these curly brackets down. I'll get rid of whatever's at the beginning. What we can do is create a public void and we'll call this new game btn. So this is the function that we're going to create. And then in brackets, I'm going to write string and new game level. And then under here, we'll have two curly brackets and we're going to do something in there. So all we're doing is we're creating a public function called new game button. And then we're passing into that function the um, name of the string that we're going to want to load. So to actually use something in Unity 5.3 and above, we actually need to use a different way to load the actual game. And we're going to um, use something at the top, uh, below the collections or in between. We can say using Unity Engine dot scene management with a semicolon. Now that's fine. Once we're in here, we can say that scene manager and if we don't have this reference at the top, we won't get scene manager to be able to access. And we can say load scene and then open brackets, whatever we had in here. So the string that we had is new game level. And then we can put a semicolon at the end. So we can save that out. And this is going to allow us to do a button press. So once we've got that, what I can do is I can close that up and what I will do is I will create an empty game object by right clicking in the hi hierarchy, create empty. And then what we'll do is we'll call this button manager object. What I'm going to do is I'm going to drag the button manager into there. This is just so we can keep it all nicely arranged. So if I close everything up, you can see everything uh, nice and neat. If we go onto the new game button and we click the little plus, We'll get an on-click event, which we'll be able to do at runtime and click it and do whatever we need to do as long as it's written in script. So what we can do is we can add the button manager object into there. We can select whether it's, well, what it's going to be using. So we need to go to the button manager script that we created. And we want to run the function, which is called new game button in brackets string, what we actually set in the script. So then we can write in whatever scenes we might have created. So from here, I just saved this scene by pressing control S and it saved out this as menu. You might want to do file save scene as if you need to do that. What we can also do is create a new scene and I will save this out again as the example and call it level one. I'll go back into the menu. I will go file build settings and we need to add menu and level one to the build settings, then we'll be able to access them. We can go back into the canvas onto the new game button and where it says the on click event and we wanted to put our new game sort of string, we'll click level or write in level one. So what we can do is then save this scene. We can press play and you can see that it's running in the background as it was.
you can see new game and exit game we can press new game it will load into that scene nicely perfectly just using a simple line if you want to be able to exit the game we can go back into the um, button manager we can do another public function that we're going to be able to access so we'll say public void exit game btn with two brackets and then two curly brackets below that and what we're going to do this time is the old way to access or to quit the application so you do application dot quit with two brackets and a semicolon so that makes it all nice and neat to be able to do that and just as we did before we can select the exit game button we can have an on-click event we can add the game button manager the button manager object we can select the button manager and we can choose exit game button now for the sake of um, this you would have to build your game out to be able to exit the application because when we press it in the editor it doesn't actually do anything it just sort of hangs a little bit because it's expecting to do something but it can't because it's not built out now obviously this is that's pretty much um, everything for just adding a couple of buttons to your canvas having adding an image and having a simple script which controls whether you know you're going to move scene or you're going to quit you can obviously add a couple more buttons to your scene really easily you can duplicate the new game button again we can go back into the scene view we can grab that exit button just pull it down a little bit we can grab the new game button call this load game button and I could potentially pull that down pull that across have the exit game button pull it up and across like that we could rename the load game button to just load game and then we could just like we did before add another public void load game button and we could put whatever script we need to do in there and in the game view because they all share this exactly the same sort of mirrored copy they're all exactly the same and they're all you know perfectly to however you want to style your buttons in the future but this is just an extremely simple way to um, you know create a few buttons on the UI um, set some styles that you want with the highlighted and the um, normal changing the text color the sizes scaling buttons up remember not to scale buttons using the actual scale or it will make the text in itself very blurred because you're scaling it up um, not the correct way you need to use the width and height based on the UI elements or it'll become very blurred and hard to see and then in your text you can change the font size you can change the font type you can change the text that's displayed you can set whether it's center aligned a lots of things that you can do but like I said, this is just a simple way to create yourself a very basic menu. And maybe if people are wanting it, I can go into showing you how to do a more advanced menu, whether that would be a confirmation box to say yes or no, whether you want to start a new game, exit the game, maybe a simple options menu, things like that. But this is just to get everybody started. So thanks very much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment and subscribe. Cheers.